Hi, everybody. Welcome to the D digital download part two. Um, what we're going to do uh, is that we're going to uh, we, 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 we come together to share what we've learned um, and um, to share with you what we've learned, because I think everybody we need to, to keep up, um, keep up to date with our digital skills. Um, and so what we're going to do is that we're going to um, share that with you, what we've learned uh, so you can learn it. And what we would love is for you to dive in and share what you've learned and get into have a, a conversation. So we're going to talk. We're going to we're going to talk about um, uh, content that we found that we that we think is interesting or funny. Uh, we're also then going to go through and talk about a number of different subject areas, um, leadership, um, a couple of things that we're going to discuss, and then right at the end, the last fifteen minutes, we're going to talk about tips that we've found out there in the the world. Um, as I gradually let people in, would you like to um, introduce yourself? So, Rob. Good morning, all. I'm Rob Durant, founder of Flywheel Results. I focus on sales training and uh, sales career placements. Brentney, I can call you Brent. You sure can. Um, good morning. I'm Brentney Hutchinson. Yes, you can call me Brent. Um, I'm the director of digital transformation at Little Bird Marketing. Adam. Hi everyone, I'm Adam Gray. I'm Tim's business partner at DLA Ignite. Uh, and, and I'm sorry if I was looking a little distracted then. I'm going and checking whether or not we're broadcasting on everybody's profile. And we're, we're broadcasting on mine and we're broadcasting on Brenton's, but we're not broadcasting on yours by the look of it, Tim. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? So, so it's saying, and, and it's worth saying to everybody that um, Eric runs the Big Life Breakfast Burrito uh, and you've had technical problems. Uh, I run a, a, a music show on a Friday afternoon and I've had technical problems. And Nick is the same. Eric. Nick's had technical uh, my, problems my, on his my, show. My show was fine today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so so it, it, the was it you, Eric, that said uh, the these are held together with good hope? Oh, this, and, the, and that was that was Nick from like. Mister Nick Nick from Mister Rayburn saying that these uh, this LinkedIn Life technology is built out of feathers and hope. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the Millennium Falcon; it's just held together with bubblegum and duct tape. <laughs> the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. We're broadcasting on everyone's channel apart from the host. <laughs> well, we're not. If it makes Tim feel any better, I'm not. It's not broadcasting on my profile. Oh, because I joined Tim, after you'd already Tim's, started. Tim's now live. I'm, I'm now live. No, ah, live. excellent. Slight three minute delay then. Coming to you live. There is a three minute delay. So, um, uh, where did we get to? Um, Eric, you're next. Introduce yourself, please. Hi, I'm Eric, uh, co founder of Crux, and we are uh, business improvement consultants that work with uh, the DLA universe, DLA team. That social nerd. That's me. <laughs> I work I work with uh, Mr. Doyle as well at Crux. Uh, I also run my own uh, company called um, Viral Media, um, and I am a social selling coach and video expert. Lorena, welcome. Hi. Hi. Good morning. I am in Lima, Peru. I am a legal marketer, and I work with the LA regarding uh, lawyers on social. Fantastic. Ooh. And last but not least, Lemwood. Hello, I'm uh, the founder and CEO of Accelery. I am X Accelery, <laughs> it's the, a um, partner of DLA Ignite. We focus on accelerating digital transformation through your people. We're all about the people. Fantastic. So who wants to go first with your, your content of the week? Can I just say before we start, uh, yeah. not necessarily to jump to me, but um, you may have noticed um, there's a gentleman out there, Gabby Leal, who's based in Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, and he he runs uh, he started basically acting as a curator of all, of all things live on uh, on LinkedIn, and he's putting together this amazing sort of daily list, and he's highlighting content creators and all of that. So he he put this session in today. Unfortunately, this session is not the session that was the session. This is another <laughs> session because the other session didn't start. So this is a new session. Um, so, uh, but doing a great, doing a, doing a load of great stuff, a load of great work, and uh, and you know this whole live 
phenomenon that's taken that's taking place and taking over on as a source of great content for lots and lots of people. He's now becoming a kind of uh, a kind of curator of all of that, like the librarian of it all, and a huge promoter of it. So hats off to him and thanks for the shout out to. So, uh, so what's it? What's his name again, Eric? Gabe Leal, G A B E with the little circumflex, L E A L. Check him out. Check him out and uh, look up what he's doing. He's he's doing great stuff, and it's great to see someone who's kind of like shepherding all this live content. <laughs> And also, it's really nice because every day he'll put out a rundown of all the stuff that's uh, going on, so you can pick and choose. It's a little uh, a little menu for you to choose what you're going to. He's doing a great job. I mean, and he's very generous with his time and and his network, and that is 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 um, yeah. Everyone should yeah, have big out. time, big time. So, um, um, who wants to who wants to go first with the um, with the content? Don't be shy. Dun, 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 well, I'm happy to I'm happy to start on, off. I um I found this uh, or I or the video found me. Who knows with this social media how it all comes together? But uh, I think his la I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name. It's Todd Clauser, C L O U S E R. Uh, he's with Chris Walker over at Refine Labs, and um, he put together a absolutely hilarious video. Now, Nick. The, the social nerd, he knows a lot about uh, putting together hilarious uh, videos, but I thought this was just absolutely, um, absolutely hilarious. So check that, check that video out. Very funny. I've seen it and it is, it is funny. <laughs> is, that, is that the one where, which you shouldn't let your grand watch? Is that the one with the? Uh, no, this is, this is um, if marketing was the a local five o'clock news. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. So anyway. Who's, who's going next? Yeah, I'll, I'll go next. Yeah. So, so my, uh, my piece of content for the week was by a friend of mine and Tim's, a guy called Scott Russell, who runs, uh, He's, a, he's a, a successful entrepreneur. He's built and sold businesses, and he runs now what is the largest independent coffee manufacturer and producer and, and distributor uh, in the UK. And uh, in his post, he talks about how he left school. It was a tough school. Uh, he didn't make great decisions when he was at school, and he was he was disruptive, and he left and then knuckled down and has always run his own business and has recently got a degree, well, three, four years ago, got a degree from the University of Suffolk, uh, and he's wearing his robes in, in the photo, and it's had a lo load of engagement. Um, but I, th I think it serves as, a, a, as an inspiration for people, that it's never too late to actually mm. do those things that you've always wanted to do. Because I think so often we find ourselves where we are, and we think, oh, well, I've made some bad decisions earlier, and we can always change those. And I think it's good, particularly in the COVID world, to, to remind ourselves of that. Very, very, very cool. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Who hasn't who hasn't made a decision in the past, and you know, some months, years, or even decades later, regretted that that decision? But um, yeah, there's always there's always other paths and other perspectives, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, you know, right now it's 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 really a world of new beginnings. There's so <laughs> much um, change, all these different things going on. Um, I mean, now is as good a time as any, right? <laughs> do you think? Do you think is there an air around around the world, um, or even in in pockets around the world? Is are we more accepting at the moment of of fumbles and steps and mistakes, or are we more tense? What are you seeing from your clients and, I, and from I, so so so? Um, I'm I'm my proposal. I'm actually going to bring on someone next week um, who actually talks about um, mistakes. Oh right, right. I see. And the importance of experimentation. Yeah, that's kind of where I was going to go with it. Actually, um, it depend. It depends on the environment. It depends on you know the mindset of the organization um, or even maybe the leader that the person is dealing with. But experimentation and you hear it all the time it's almost cliche that you learn more from your failures than you do from your successes a calm so, sea um, never made a good sailor as they say yeah yeah so um you got to get out there and um you know take 
take, uh, you know, some risk um, so that uh, you grow. It's, it's a bit like putting vinyl records on a radiator. <laughs> it's, it's turned off. <laughs> Just to let you know, I, I, I could sense the tension yeah. from the vinyl collector. It's it, it's it's not on. That would it's have been funny, on. wouldn't it? If he'd said, it's not on. Oh, my God, it's on. <laughs> they're all dripping off. Mistake, mistake. Mistake, yes. They're all bent and dripping off. Melting. This, this, is for some, this is for something very exciting later, which uh, which I'm really uh, just, looking I, forward well, to. And the heating doesn't come on before four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> but, but everybody, I mean, what do you think? I mean, do you think there's an expect expectation that we now can make mistakes? Yeah, much more so than there ever has been, I think. There's a really good graphic going around from Jessica Gusick. He's the senior brand lead at Shopify. And it has like out and in, like the LinkedIn label. And then it lists uh, a bunch of things that, have you guys seen it? It lists a bunch uh, of no, things no. previously done online and then um, I think the very first one, or no, it's not the first one, but it says like previously announcing your victories and like that's out. And now what's in is sharing your mistakes, sharing your failures. And it's good. It's a great graphic. I'll share it. Um, but there's like, mm, there's, been, there's been, just been such a lot of, I, I, maybe I'm just tuned into it more now because of what we, because of what we, uh, this kind of space that we live in, but there's, there seems to be such a lot of credibility in saying, look, you know, no one's superhuman. Right, we've all started businesses and some have failed. We've all started projects that have failed. We've all tried things that didn't quite work out the way, but there was maybe a propensity to hide those under the, you know, sweep them under the carpet and crack on. Now it seems very acceptable. Maybe it's in line with the whole rise of the awareness and and acceptability of discussions around mental health and things like that. But it's actually cool for people who might be in the public eye as a leader or as an entrepreneur or as an innovator or whatever to say, you know, life's been a bit tough. I've, I've, you know, a few things have broken and haven't worked out. And it seems to me that communities rally around that. Mm -hmm. I feel Just ahead of the curve. I've been screwing up for years. <laughs> <laughs> but do you want to tell everyone about it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, owning it is incredibly important. I, I believe in, in the three sorries. When you make a mistake, when you screw up, you own it, you um, apologize, and then you ask what you can do to make it better. And and that's, you know, if you're you're harming someone else. But myself, I've I've run small businesses into the ground. Uh, but then you pick yourself up and, and you dust yourself off and, and you try it again. Uh, Dan Pink has a book coming out real soon, and he's been collecting a lot of data around regrets. And I'm looking forward to reading that because I'd like to at least say that all of these quote unquote failures have left me with fewer regrets. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a, uh, my post of the week is uh, yeah. it, 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 it's very related to what we're talking right now. It's from a, a lawyer, an indie British lawyer, Jan V. Patel. And she posted, uh, she uses to, to give uh, these commencement speeches at schools, at different schools. And she started her, her um, speeches always and it's on her post this time that she says when you look at my linkedin profile it looks like it was that easy it that this was an easy path but it wasn't i did not have the best grades i also didn't come from a generation of lawyers and i will i was also not the right ethnicity or gender which meant it was all an uphill battle, but I found and created my own path and ne never gave up. And she's really wonderful. Uh, she has maybe this time only, let us say only 62 likes. I don't know how many um, wish, um, views she has, but she's, she's great. I've been following her for years and I saw she had a an excellent law firm, uh, leaded by women, and she's always very sincere. So I, I think, and she she tells about her failures and no, and and and, and the contrary, the uh, 
success. Success, success exactly. And uh, really, uh, it's. I, I think today we have to talk about both our successes and our failures. And maybe you can uh, answer. I have a question, but I think. Uh, Experts in management and in these methodologies like agile, 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 they expect you know to make your plan and to try, uh, and maybe you success or you fail, and then you to get get back. So now it's also accepted in these management theories to 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 to, to success and to fail, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Experimentation, experimentation. Experimentation. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's um, I think that um, as people are focusing more on um, empathy, it's a lot easier for people to relate to uh, failures much easier for it's much easier for everyone to relate to the person who's struggling through something um, as compared to the person who's, you know, sitting at the top. Right. Um, so um, it's, it's easy to, it's easy to think that it was really easy for that person to get there. Um, but nowadays sharing what you're going through, sharing the struggle, mm -hmm people who are also struggling, which tends to be, um, you know, there was a time when the mask, right, was what people did, right? You know, I'm great. Everything's great. My family's great. This is great, right? And, 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 and now, um, not only do I think that repels people, but um, the, it's more acceptable because people can relate to it. Um, people just connect more with struggle. I think also, you know, every business fails. Every business goes under eventually. You need only look at the Fortune 500 and what's happened since the year 2000 or the year, year 1950. And all Constant of those churn. companies yeah. have, have peaked and then they've eventually disappeared as they become irrelevant. They become too big to be able to change and whatever. So the fact that, that you started a little business, it didn't grow very far and then it imploded. It's fine. You know, if it can happen to... Uh, uh, you know, Ed Kodak, the largest film company in the world, who had many opportunities to do the right thing and chose not to, then it can happen to your little business. And I think you've just, as you said, you've just got to dust yourself down, get up and try again, haven't you? So who who else has um, not shared their content apart from me? I, I had something. Uh, do you want to do yours, Brittany? Carry on. You go, go first, Brittany. So um, mine is from Alexandria Sampson. She's the Advancement and Communications Coordinator for the YMCA. And she wasn't even a connection of mine before I saw her post. And um, basically, she talks about she's she's encouraging people to reach out and um, just connect with people genuinely because you never know what could happen from it. But what I really liked about the post is she's you can tell that it was just it wasn't didn't take a lot of time for her to post it was just like a raw thought she had this great right. experience she had a call um with erica key so she is reaching out to people mm -hmm. someone who could possibly mentor her or offer some offer wisdom and you know that's kind of what i try to share in my feed too it doesn't matter how long you've been at a company it, it doesn't matter um how old you are we all have something of value to say not to overcomplicate it don't overthink it um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to give her a shout out. And this was actually a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. I went back and forth between like five posts for way too long. So, that's mine. Thank very you. Very good. Thank love you. It. Very good. It, it. Nick, have you? Uh... Yeah, well, I did what I, uh, I always do and just didn't overthink it. Just grab something. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fantastic um, post. It's a, a guy who's put up a video um, that basically um, most agencies kind of, uh, you know, sort of express how kind of edgy they are. And it's a kind of parody video around um, 
How it's a TikTok video, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's, it's, it's a TikTok, but it's it's hilarious. Yeah, it's just so that's the so one that we, you, your grand shouldn't see because it's got words beginning with. It's, it's got it's got some swears <laughs> in there, but um, but it's uh, it's uh, it's just hilarious, a hilarious parody of you know how edgy they are, kind of boiling eggs in kettles, and, and but it's like it gets all these lists of things why they're so edgy and, and uh, anti corporate, and and then uh, and then he says, um, "Am I frozen?" No. Oh, okay. It looks like I've frozen my end. Um, Everyone's just listening yeah. very intently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, then, and, then, and, then, and then he says, and then he says, right at the end of the video, he says, uh, yeah, and our, on our client list is uh, we've got seven oil companies and McDonald's on our client list. Like, <laughs> <laughs> how very anti-corporate is, and then it kind of swings back the other way. It's, it's hilarious. Um, I'll pop the uh, the link down in the comments. Cool. Uh, Eric, you're next, I think. Yeah, I uh, I spotted this um, from uh, the wonderful uh, Alistair um, Alistair Dickinson, CEO of Maximize dot com. Um, so there, I kind of um, you'll, you'll, in fact, if you're listening, Alistair, which I think you are, um, just look at the history. <laughs> yeah, he's not jumped in yet. So Maximize uh, geo mapping, um, helping companies understand data, and he wrote this really cool article um which is yes your business data has a lot of value some even say it's the new oil so alistair for anyone who follows alistair will know that he's got a, a very and he works in that sort of like heavy data space helping companies understand the geo so eric if you move it to the top yeah just so people know on that graphic alistair has these different he basically has characters <laughs> yeah. so those three things that so the three people are there that that you you it may surprise you but they're all alistair but they're actually through the, 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 the characters so on the left hand side um i can't remember but it's a sales he's got he's that's a, a, that's a stripy jacket stripy, mr stripy jacket and he's a sales expert and he does <laughs> Mr. Stripey, yeah. So some would say these are characters. Some would say these are Alistair's personalities. <laughs> <laughs> just just a sample of them. Um, so 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 this uh, this piece that he wrote, he does lots of video, lots of really good stuff, lots of really lighthearted, and some sort of extremely serious stuff. But this 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 caught my eye because it was a lighthearted take on a pretty serious uh, topic, all about uh, understanding. Um, how data works. Yes, your data has a lot of value. Some even say it's the new oil, as he goes on to talk about. Um, he says, you might you might not know, but some companies are sold not based on value. But for data and customer information they've collected from memory, I think Facebook on its IPO was valued at something like uh, 90 US dollars per user account, which resulted in billions in valuation. Today, it's worth even more. So he goes on to explain how, how I just like this from the fact that Many companies exist. Many companies exist and do what they do and perhaps don't realize the data that they are generating and <laughs> and could be collecting for their for their use. Now, Alistair's kind of work, I don't know if he's got images of it in here. Yeah, he does. The kind of work that he does, it sort of geo plots where all your customer bases are and all of that. And it's quite intense stuff, what he's doing. He's working with big businesses with multiple outlets, plotting all this data. You know, where are your biggest sales happening? And it just it just feeds very much in line to the whole the whole the whole process of understanding how your business works, how cash flows, how how sales motions and buying motions are generated, and really understanding because I think that there's, there's a wind, maybe not a wind of change at the moment, certainly a wind of people having to understand more about <laughs> about what what's that? Is there a I've got a blank screen at the moment. No, I was just <laughs> when you said, I don't know. I had a thought about a wind, but it wasn't a okay. Wind okay, wind. that's a different. That's for, that's for a different podcast, right? Um, <laughs> Sorry. The the uh, no, but the fact that so so to crunch all of this down, why did I pick this? Because I could have picked something a bit more lighthearted, and certainly with Alistair stuff, you can pick lots of stuff that's just got lighthearted. But the fact is, the overarching statement is perhaps, and I'm certainly sensing this that that businesses are realizing perhaps for the first time that they have to go deeper on how their business works, the, the nuts, bolts and mechanics and the roots and branches of how from demand generation through right all the way through to invoicing and delivering projects and products, the need for data right now is cool. So I like this article. I thought it was really cool. If anyone wants to check it out, go to uh, Alistair Dickinson's page um, 
and check it out. Yes, your business data has a value. Some even say it's the new oil. And that's it. Thank you. And thank you, Alistair, for that. Oh, oh, you closed it down. I just wondered what was... Did you panic um, there, Did you panic? I panic. <laughs> I'm trying to... You know what it's like running these things, um, Eric? You're, try, you're trying to... Sort of, it's like a swan, isn't it? You All the buttons. Underneath the, the buttons. water, you're going like this. Um, so, yeah, but I'm um, thinking about Eric telling us, oh, it's no big deal to host. No big deal to host. <laughs> I don't know what all the panic's about. It's a doddle, Brent. It's a doddle, it's a doddle Brent. It's a doddle. I don't know what he's on about. I, I, I think the heating's just come on in your house. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my piece, of, my piece of content is from Nick Mason, who's the CEO and, and, and founder at a company called Turtle. And it's the amazing psychology of after-dinner mints. So, you know, so, so, so picture this, you're sitting in a restaurant with, with friends and the bill comes in and you know that and you know that you're sitting next to Nick and he's the guy that goes that, well, like you have the bread roll and, and, and you have the salad. And, and so but, but but the person comes along. What what is the chance that you're going to basically give a tip? Now, here in the UK, it's not like the States where the States, you pretty much always give a tip. Um, but here in the UK, you don't necessarily tip people. But. That the conclusion of the psychology, they found that people who were given a mint will tip 3% more than those who gave nothing. People who were asked if they would like a mint will tip 14% more. Uh, people who were given a mint and then asked later if they will want another will tip a whopping 23% more. And that's what? based on a, a one, based on like a, a, a you know, one pence, which is, you know, like a cent in terms of a after dinner mint. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. And of course, it's not about the mint. It's about, it's a, it's, it's deeper than that, isn't it? It's a, the mint's a metaphor. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so can I, can I, quick, can I quickly tell you my tipping story? Can I quickly tell you my tipping story? Yes. Is that okay, Tim? Because is yeah. that all right? Yeah. Are you sure? Is this the one so, about the Amazon guy? No, 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 no. So, um, um, Sarah and I were in Ibiza with some friends of ours in 2016, I think, 2016, 2017. And uh, we'd, we'd arrived in the afternoon. Um, we went out for some lunch. Later that night, we, we'd booked tickets to Pasha to go and see David Guetta on the on the, the Friday night. I can't tell you what the, the night's called because it's called F Me, F Me, It's Friday is the name of the event. David Guetta comes on stage at two in the morning. Um uh, just to let you know, it's it's a late start. So we went out for a wander that night. First so night you're allowed out late at night, are you? Yeah, yeah, allowed out late at night. Um, we went out for a wander and we we said, let's, anyone fancy some sushi? There's, I was on the phone saying there's a great sushi restaurant just down here. It's in a place called Ushaya. I hadn't been to Ibiza before. I didn't know that Ushaya is one of the top places, events in Ibiza. So we go up to the, the, the restaurant. Can we have a table for four? Yeah, we can fit you in right now. It's going to be loud because the restaurant is right behind the DJ box. And I was like, yeah, okay, fair enough. Table for four. We go and we sit down and we're behind the DJ box. There's a big glass screen looking out over the open air of Ushaya. And you're just slightly above the crowd. Ushaya is an open air disco with a hotel and it's the size of a football pitch. And it is rammed with people because Swedish House Mafia are on stage. And we're sitting trying to eat sushi with Swedish House Mafia banging out Greyhound live to 12,000 people jumping up and down like this. And I said to the waitress when we'd finished, how do we get in there? She went, it's a cellar, you can't get in. And I said, how do we get in there? And she went, ah, right, how do you get in there? I said, that, she said, the only way to get in there is to go through the VIP door here with the two bouncers on it with VIP passes to get into the VIP area, which is just in front of the DJ's box. And I said, how much? And she went, 100 euros each. Tip. I said, okay. I placed the money down. Everyone's complaining and going, we weren't supposed to be doing this. I placed the money down and she signaled me to come through to the back. She put the wristband on my on my wrist. <laughs> and uh, we got, we asked ask Sarah, Richard Cheryl, we got escorted down this this lane. We were only, we only came out in like jeans and t-shirts. And the next thing we were down in front of the DJ box in this little VIP weird area with some Russian oligarchs and stuff like that. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And uh, yeah, so so, and there's, there's just the very last part of that story was um, as I walked in, I'd had a few beers. I was feeling a little bit happy. Everybody did, 
a girl sort of grabbed me around the waist and went, hiya. And I said, did I, did I work with you before? And she said, no, I don't think so, unless you work in TV. And I said, uh, no, I, no, I don't work in TV. Did I work with, did I work with you at Acergy? And she said, uh, no, 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 I'm Anna Richardson from, uh, from Naked Attraction, Channel 4. And I went, ah, right. And then I looked around and Sarah had Sue Perkins, which I'll show you the photograph because I know no one believes it. Sue Perkins from Mel and, Mel and Sue in a, an arm lock dancing together to because Sue Perkins and Anna are partners. They're married. Yeah, that's my tip story. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. That's a good story. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. How do we follow that? It's hard. Well, 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 shut it down. Let's, just, let's just go home for the weekend. <laughs> the bar has been set now. The bar has been set. <laughs> so so the, 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 the question that I've got, because I want to go back, I want to pick up actually on, on what you talked about earlier on, Eric, about the fact that people are far more able to, to share their mistakes um, and um, are far more open to experimentation. But the thing is, is that with life, I think, with COVID, with, um, with digital, that things can actually be overwhelming. And I just wondered if people here had some coping strategies that they had that they could share with the, um, the audience. And if the audience have their own coping strategies, what they could share with us. So is this, is this coping strategy beyond digital coping strategies? That's just in life? Any, anything, anything. Yeah. So, yeah, Nick. Yeah, um, I use the. Uh, I know Eric does as well. I use the um, the Calm app quite a lot. So um, I try and do uh, guided meditation at least once a day. I usually start in the morning with the Calm app, um, and I journal as well. So I, I do a gratitude journal first thing in the morning. Um, and I just find sometimes if, if I'm as a sort of coping mechanism, I guess if, if I'm kind of getting stressed out or there's too much going on, I'll just stop and I'll go and meditate for, for ten minutes just to just to. I, it, it just happens my head kind of gets filled with ideas and thoughts and it's like okay i need to kind of push these away now so i'm gonna just stop take a breather uh whack on the car map for 10 minutes and just meditate and just let it all let it all um, go. nick what is that word you're saying car what is calm that? Ca calm c-a-l-m calm calm yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, the calm, 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 calm app. It is. It is fantastic. Um, That's a, it's not, a game changer. Yeah, if you're not used to med meditation, ding. Yeah, yeah. It's calm really, really good. I do something. Yeah, I do. I, 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 uh, I, I, my calm partner, calm partner is, is James, the meditation guy, and I. But you, I, I think you're with the lady. Is that right? That you, I, you uh, use yeah, it? yeah. I, I use a lady, and it's weird, isn't it? How you, you. I listened to her voice every single day, and, and one yeah. day I fired up the app, and there was another lady on. There. I was like, "What? <laughs> what? What's going on? Who's this? What are you doing? <laughs> I don't have a relationship with you." <laughs> <laughs> it was bizarre, bizarre. Oh, but yeah, very good, very, very good app. Uh, I've used yeah. the I've used the Calm app as well. I think it's. I I did I did the whole um, meditation course on it. Have you done it? It's just amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I, I just do the daily ones. But, um, right. Yeah. I'll tell you what, even even the paid version of that is worth it. It's so worth mm -hmm. it. It works out like a you know, I think it's less than a pound a day for what you get from it. From yeah, I, six, I sometimes about, have the music 60. on when I'm writing proposals as well. The music on there is phenomenal. Yeah, it's about, about sixty quid a day. I think um, they've got a deal on them. I mean, we can do a lifetime you, subscription. Plan. You can use if you search on the internet, look for Car Map um, discount. You can usually get a quarter for free. There was yeah. a deal. I got the deal with American Express. You got a whole twelve months um, for free. But if you wow. search, you'll always you'll always get. A, there's always a deal going on. Just search on the internet. The balance. It's a bit like Restream. Yeah. You can always get. A, there's always a. I, you know, I've reconnected with Restream and just went to the internet and got thirty percent off. The Balance app was at least at the beginning of January offering uh, a year free. I've been using that. It's very similar to Calm. If you're looking to get started, I would strongly suggest the 10% Happier podcast. Ooh. It really just helps you dip your toes into the, is this meditation thing too woo-woo for me? Or, you know, how can I, a pragmatist, get started? I, I loved listening to uh, the story um, 
the name of the uh, founder is, is escaping me right now, but he's very uh, transparent about what drove him to it and, and uh, what he did not expect to get out of it and has found. So uh, 10% happier. The 10% happier podcast. There's a, a, another one I'd, I'd like to recommend as well, which is an audio book I listened to recently, which was uh, Solve, uh, Solve for Happy. Uh, by Mo Mo Gadol, I think I'm pronouncing his surname correctly. Um, it's it's a beautiful story about uh, um, a guy that loses his son, uh, his young son, and he kind of reprograms his brain uh, to be happy because he's obviously had to deal with the um, you know the trauma of losing a son. It's a, a really beautiful uh, podcast, uh, not podcast, sorry, audio book. But I definitely recommend downloading the audio book as opposed to the book because Mo is reading it himself and he's got a lovely kind of sing song voice. It's a fantastic book, really good. I think, I think, so this is where it's going to get weird. Um, <laughs> so, so many years ago, I, I started believing that we weren't meant to do what we're doing right now. We weren't supposed, to, we weren't designed to sit and look at screens and sit in chairs. So I started reading about our inner barbarian, and I, 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 I've never spoken about this. It's the first time I've ever spoken about it. So I firmly believe that as well as all that beautiful stuff about stillness and calmness and meditation, we were meant to be physically destroyed regularly Just, and, and push ourselves to like, so like, for instance, I've never, I, I do cold shower therapy every yeah, single day. Tell us about that. Well, it's it's yeah. I think we were we were meant to be we were meant to be our bodies were meant to feel physical stress, and I think it's good to stress them. Like so regularly, I'll when it's freezing cold and raining and snowing out here, I'll go out in shorts and do a kettlebell routine, and my son will be standing laughing at me. I'll be in shorts, freezing and and jittering, doing twenty thirty kilogram kettlebell routines until the the part the point where and this is where it's going to get weird, until I feel as if I'm going to pass out or vomit. And then I'll stand and breathe and come back in, go and have a shower, chill out. That, for me, is an amazing coping mechanism because I think we were meant to be pushing, pulling, struggling. Our bodies were meant to be stressed. And sitting in a chair for eight to ten hours a day, I don't think we get rid of... It's like, in my mind, it's like we're not flushing those bad chemicals out of our muscles and out of our yeah. brains. You, and I you, think they, you've been out... You, you went... You, was it last winter you went and and, and um, um, got into the sea, didn't you? Cold sea. Yeah, but do we do it all the time? And, and by the way, the um, Eric lives in Aberdeen, which if uh, if anyone knows, is up north. It's and it's cold. And it's cold. And it's yeah. cold and but freezing, but I, your, I think, your body adjusts. I think it's very cultural, Eric, because uh, we in the south, for example, have another view of that. Uh, we are in a tropical weather and we take care of the body. And so we don't feel uh, maybe so challenged as you in the north with a very harsh uh, weathers uh, feel, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Screw up, no. There's, there's, there's uh... a... <laughs> Um, we, there's these young union uh, archetypes. So, so I'm, I'm part of a men's group um, that kind of helps young men kind of coming out of the, the prison system to kind of relocate them and sort of get them back into uh, society. And, and we use a system in that, which is there's four uh, kind of archetypes. So there's what we call uh, the warrior, uh, the lover, the magician and the uh, sovereign. So the warrior is kind of our doing energy. Um, the magician is our mind, our thinking energy. The lover is obviously emotion, and the sovereign kind of governs all of those. And what you were saying about physical energy is is it's your kind of your anger. It's your kind of doing energy. Um, and as a, obviously, as a man, it's a very you know it's a masculine thing. To, it, but it's kind of looked on and frowned upon not to get angry as a man. But that's our kind of when we get angry. That's our kind of our, our it's a defense energy. mechanism, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, 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 um, and we're we're you know kind of uh, pre-programmed to kind of do that, but those those archetypes are kind of governed by that sovereign. So some you know some people can be too much magician or too much lover or too much warrior. So you have to kind of balance those archetypes. But it's very interesting. Eric, your um, tale about working out reminded me of um, a story I, I tell my tenth grade geometry class when it comes to failing. You stand in front of 10th grade high school students. The only thing they want to do is fit in and conform. And the first thing I do on day one is say to them, I want you to fail. 
Well, that's how you lose your audience very quickly. So I go into explaining to them. What I mean by that is this is your chance to try new things, take opportunities, fail with very little repercussion. I want you to guess at the answer based on what we're covering in class. I'm still getting head nods and, and tuning out. So I find the biggest guy in the room and I presume he's on the football team. And sure enough, are you on the football team? Yes. Okay. Do you work out? Of course. Well, what happens when you work out? I mean, to your muscles at the molecular level, this guy was bright enough. He knew, well, you tear it down. Exactly. You tear it down and then your body builds it back even stronger. That's what I want you to do with this class. And for that matter, every class that you're in here in high school, because there are very little repercussions for you to try, fail, and rebuild, and try again. Just quick story that your workout and bringing it full circle to what we were talking about earlier. I love that. I love that. And I, 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 I don't know anything about it. I wonder if anyone in the audience does, but there's, um, I read an article years back, and I'm going to dig it out again because it's a known thing. The difference between distress and you stress, EU stress, all one word, EU stress and distress. You stress is positive. We can we can guide it. It's associated with excitement and doing and and focus. Whereas distress is restless and a bit kind of negative and all of that. So uh, so yeah. So for so yeah, for me, it's about it's about even at fifty one, trying to push my body to the point where it where it stops and says I can't do anymore a, a couple of times a week. And that doesn't have to be extreme weights and all of that. Just pushing your body to the point where I can't I can't physically do anymore. I'm so cold, I'm so sore, you know, or I feel as if I'm going to burst out crying if I keep doing one more, whatever it is, is a very healthy thing. It tends to sort of like soothe me a little bit. Insanity workout. Insanity I do, workout, uh, yeah. I, I uh, do um, every, every day, um, at least I try to start the day with um, some form of devotional. So I'm a Christian, a de devotional as well as prayer. I actually am doing this devotional which i highly recommend it's called 100 days of favor for anyone who are who's out there i'll probably do it again um after i complete this the other thing that i do is um on i take one day usually sunday and i don't do any work try not to look at any email try not to look at any social media that can be more challenging but um yeah at least one day where i just don't do anything what about you, Tim? What's your what's your secrets? What well, my secrets? I, mm -hmm. I've used the the Calm app, mm -hmm. um, but I to pick up on your point, um, I used to um, used to have a personal trainer when you could go to the gym, and we set a goal, which is for me to do some pull ups, and and I and, and I was and I'm really shit at it, and um, and in fact, one of the best ways to do pull ups is actually to do the opposite, because what you're doing is that. You it's not just about training your muscle to pull you up. It's also, but but what you do, you can train your muscle to pull you up better by actually by letting yourself go down. So um, we used to do pull downs, which was was to, and I still couldn't. I, you know, trying to do a couple of them, it's just like impossible. But um, <laughs> but I did the um, uh, two years ago. I did. There's a there's an app called Couch to Five K which teaches you how to do, it's a BBC app. It teaches you how to do, to run 5K over um, six weeks and you have it in your headphones. Um, and um, so that would have been 2020. I came back from France. I was on holiday yeah. and I decided that if I catch COVID, I want to be as fit as I can. So I did the Couch to 5K app and, and I've run, I, I was up at 5.30 this morning when I did 5K in the freezing cold. Nice. Outstanding. That's very was, good. Anyway. It was, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's not all the time that you can listen to Rush and Metallica and. Has, has anyone, Japan. anyone any, uh, any, any sports? Because uh, I'm, I'm a big snowboarder and a big mountain biker. I know Eric is as well, but we talked about that before about kind of doing a sport where you kind of get into, into a kind of flow state where you're almost, yeah. it's almost like meditation. You're just so focused on the sport that you forget everything else. So focused on not dying. Golf is yeah, like that. that. that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Extreme golf. Extreme golf. It got, yeah. no, golf. 
this is the thing about golf. It takes, you have to be very calm. That's why Tiger Woods and all these great golfers are like, they don't no emotion when they're out there. They're just, they, to get in the flow, they just kind of try to just release everything. Don't let anything affect them because you've got to stay super focused in order to hit that little ball. <laughs> I, I did, I did a, a golfing lesson. Um, it was a part of a way day. Um, um, and when you're standing there at the, the tee with your racket and you've got to uh, uh, whack the ball, um, when, when you're thinking about it, it you it's it's crap. If if the moment that you basically don't think about it, and I I had this I I would I put myself into this like a meditatorial state, and I hit this thing, and it went and it landed on the green, <laughs> and it was and it was and I still remember it. I was in um, in France on this guy, and, and it was probably the, one of the most calmest things in my life I've ever felt. That's how that game gets a hold of you around the throat, though. Yeah, the, that that one shot. <laughs> that is that you one, get one shot. shot, and it'll bring yeah. keep bringing you back. You you can have a horrible day, <laughs> and you have the last hole. You have one good shot. The next thing you know, you're like, I'm doing, I'm coming but, back. But it was that shot, wasn't it, Leonard? It was that shot back in uh, 2004. Yeah, when you when you got it straight down the fairway and onto the green within putting distance of the hole, and you said. This is it. And, and every time you get low, you think back to that shot. Think back to that. It's like Ian, <laughs> Ian Wright. Well, I've Ian Wright. More the, than one now, but <laughs> Ian, Ian like, Wright, the famous, uh, the famous Arsenal and uh, England player, said um, said in an interview, he said, uh, even if your team's been beaten six one, and if you as the striker, if your if your team's been beaten six nil, and if you're the striker and you get one goal to make it six one, everyone's walking back and depressed, and you're like this. Come on. <laughs> So the no, that one show. You say that. I saw that in my four-year-old. My four-year-old started soccer this year. <laughs> it was I, I didn't know this was in me. My four-year-old started soccer this year. First game, you know, she they they practiced and they had the game. First game, she her first goal. First of all, I found out that I'm an insane parent. <laughs> you know, I didn't like, know that until yeah! that first goal. <laughs> yeah, we're like, yes, <laughs> Tim Ross. <laughs> she's, she's, she's four. We're like, yeah. <laughs> but she gets, she got three goals in her first game, and after that, she was hooked. She's already talking about next season. The cup. <laughs> I bet you're walking up and down the uh, uh, soccer. Go on, go on. She's talking about a transfer bonus. <laughs> so, so, Lorena, you do yoga. Cool. How, how, what, where, where do you do that? Hi. Uh, yes, yeah, I do yoga. Might. I've been doing yoga for maybe 20 years. I started because I had back pain mm -hmm. and I discovered that it uh, helped my mm -hmm. body to be more flexible. I was very inflexible at school. So I was, I'm tall, I'm pretty tall, uh, but inflexible. So, and I started with that and my body changed a lot. And yes, you have to take time. So next weekend I'll attend a, a workshop, three days workshop. Won't post uh, too much and won't be on, on, on social too much because I, I'll be in that. But maybe I'll tell about it. It's very, mm. it's, I, I like it. It helps you because yoga, you know, is a... Um, the match from body and soul. It's not only to be calm or meditate. You can meditate also. And I think meditation is really very, very good. But it you work on on your on your body. I do a yenger and hatha. A yenger is with props, and it helps you to have a better position, you to better and the the position that you're body is able to do so you don't challenge your body at all sorry i thought uh, you said jenga which is that thing where you I, <laughs> I, know, I know i know i know yeah. i know that that uh, game yeah yes and i was remembering when when rob was talking about his, his students because i told you i am working with a group this is the first time that i'll work with a group of college students and one iba and trying to to bring them on social on LinkedIn to know and to 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 really 
change and prepare their mindset to social and to to know to be aware that it's the future so and i talk up with them about faith as no I talk about failing and not failing, and we talk also about it. I mean, it was very challenging because the difference with my lawyers is that my lawyers don't want to or are not um, willing to to change their mindset. That's their problem. And the problem of, the, of these young people is that they don't know what to do in their lives, you know? So it's really challenging. Cool. Yeah. So we've only got five five minutes left. Any tips that people want to share with the audience, apart from never eat yellow snow? <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 I think that uh, in, at the moment there, there's an awful lot of pressure on people, either real pressure or perceived pressure. And uh, Nick talking about his journaling and stuff and, and affirmations. And I think that, that you know, we are the lucky ones in the world. You know, we are none of us going to starve to death or it's highly unlikely that a bomb is going to land on our house because we're not in a war zone. And and I think that embracing that and recognizing how privileged we are, even though we may have challenges in our lives, uh, is a really important thing. And I spend an awful lot of time thinking about how lucky I am to be in the position that I'm in. And I think that uh, for a lot of people, they the privileges that we have is uh, is something which is taken as a uh, as a given as a hygiene thing and actually it isn't because for many people they don't have those privileges so I, I think looking at the positive side of things is very healthy for people it's, it's weird though isn't it how our brain has that kind of even though you know everything's going right and everything's going well your brain automatically reverts to that kind of negative bias thing and you have to really push back against it it's it, it can do, yeah. And, and, you know, and I think that one of the challenges that we have is that we look back at, to Tim's first point, we look back to the bad decisions that we've made earlier on in our lives, and we think, oh, my God, I wish I hadn't done that. But actually, all of the bad decisions I made have got me to where I am today. And I don't mean like big house and a Ferrari parked in the drive, but I mean, you know, lovely wife, lovely kids, job that I love, team of people around me that I really enjoy spending time with. Uh, it doesn't feel like work. And if you change anything early on, maybe you don't end up at this point. And I yeah. think that, that it's very, we need to be very mindful of what we wish for. Yeah, absolutely. Any more tips? Enlist Rob? a buddy. Sorry, mate? Enlist a buddy. Right. We were talking about you know meditation and so on. Myself, I've got somebody that I can uh, confide in when I'm having challenges and somebody that is going to push me when I'm not doing the things that I've committed to doing. And um, the same goes for him. Uh, I push him when he needs pushing and uh, console him when he needs consoling. There's a good good tip there from Susan as well about how yeah. humor. Any other tips, Brentney? Well, I was just thinking um, when Lorena was talking about yoga that one of my favorite things that I've learned from that, a lot of teachers will start or in the class by saying, take what serves you and leave the rest. And um, I just have that hit me so hard the first time I heard it. And I feel like it's spilled over into every area of my life. I'm like, if it serves me, great, support it. If not, move on from it. Like, don't give it another thought. Don't waste any energy on it. And it, just because it's good for the next person doesn't mean that it has to be good for you. So. Yeah, that's great advice. Eric. Um, something something I used to talk about a lot, something I properly only realized the value of sort of six months ago, and it's been building since, which is quite a quite a chintzy kind of throwaway statement. Um, growing communities. Growing communities. Mm. At every given opportunity that we can, we should look for an excuse or an opportunity or a chance to start to build a community, whether it's a community of three people, 
30 people or 300 people, particularly on digital, digital sources, social media, whatever it might be, take the opportunity to build communities. Now, there, there might be people sitting there going, how and why? And that's another conversation. But um, starting with the how and the why and starting to work out how I might be able to build communities, because I tell you, it is it is possible to do. It is a fantastic thing to do. And every single question that I might have about my business life and even my domestic life, I have people in communities, digital communities that can help me with those. Um, I do worry about people who have yet to realize the power of building proper communities, communities that are that are evolving and dynamic and heaving and helping. So any question I've got about my business, for my business, about concepts, about ideas or whatever, I can find a specialist, a, a helpful person or someone who can introduce me to that person um, or someone who can just offer advice within communities. Um, yeah. I, proper, I properly learned the value of that about... A, understood the value of that properly about six months ago, even though I've been talking about it for longer, but um, my goodness, it's so important. It's interesting you say that's, that. Well. Uh, that's it, so great. It, it's, um, uh, there seems to be a, obviously COVID's kind of- You're very faint, Nick. Oh, sorry. Uh, obviously COVID's kind of exacerbated it, but um, I think there seems to be a sort of uh, devolution of, of community and, and moving that into a digital space is a beautiful thing. Um, you know, I mean, we're lucky we have re really nice neighbours on both sides of us and, and we talk to them and, and, um, and obviously I, I have my men's charities that I go to a lot, but there seems to be less and less focus on, you know, traditionally, you know, thousands of years ago, we had much stronger communities and it just seems to be kind of eroding over, over time. But yeah, you're right, building digital uh, communities is uh, incredible. Idea. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I if I could just uh, jump on the community bandwagon. <laughs> jump in. Um, the, it, I I couldn't agree more. And it's just I know that people have been building communities um, digitally or participating in it. But I don't know for whatever reason, um, probably from our from the the work that we're doing. Um, you know, and I don't want to go down that tap that too far down that talent down that tangent but it is much easier right to build community it is much easier to do it um with social media and um you know if you haven't um you know really tapped into that um not just i mean there's it's one thing to be a part of a community but if you have something in your life that you want to to move in particular right something that is really burning inside of you that you want to get out boy doing it uh using social media to create a community around it is thrilling and i would add uh, it's very important community and be genuine and be humble maybe it comes from my law background and lawyers that used to have big egos. You know, Lenwood, you are, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they have big egos, but really we have to be very genuine. We have to be ourselves and try to, 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 to be happy in that way. Yeah. No masks, only for anti-COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I think I need to um, bring this week's session to a close. Um, we are three minutes over. So thank you, Rob, Brentney, Adam, Eric, Nick, Lorena, Lenwood, um, to Will, Vanessa, um, Susan, um, and all the people that are um, um, who have um, contributed to today. Thank you. And we'll be here next week. Awesome. Thank you, Tim, thank for you. hosting. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.